Alright, this is John Cullen with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, actually, I want to show you guys the 12 ways I eat differently than most raw foodists out there. Now, first of all, I want to let you guys know that today, which is, a, I'm posting this on a Sunday, is the last day to sign up for the 2020 Raw Food Mastery Summit that starts tomorrow, which is Monday, uh, April 13th. And I am the first presenter in the Mastery Summit. In the Mastery Summit, you're going to learn from over 20 long-term raw food, plant-based eaters. <laughs> and maybe my dog is excited. Um, also, who just went out to go pee, because I could tell his paws are wet. Um, <laughs> about eating a healthiest raw foods diet possible. And so once again, link is down below. Please register for that uh, before it's too late because I think I'm up first. And if you don't register now, you will miss my episode, which might be a bit sad. But I'm glad you follow me here on YouTube. But maybe you guys are also coming from me or found me because of the Raw Mastery Summit. So thank you for being here. And uh, this video is here for you guys as well as on my current viewers. I tell you guys to know how my diet's a little bit different than most people on the Mastery Summit. You know, maybe some of the things I do will be pretty different than what most people are doing there. Maybe some of them will be the same. And here's the thing, this has been my journey, my story, and what I've learned over the last 25 years. And I'm doing this because, you know, maybe one of you guys is brand new and doing all this stuff. And let me tell you guys, I wish there was somebody like me. 25 years ago that could basically give me the download on share everything I'm going to be showing with you guys in this episode because I would have basically jump started me you know to kind of doing it in my opinion a better way you know there's many ways to do raw foods I'm not going to say my way is best or right or wrong this is the way that I have found that I believe to be helping me and you know maybe it could help you guys too so I also want you guys to be aware of that. So the thing I want to share is that you know some of the things I do may be considered extreme even by some other people that are eating raw foods and unnecessary and I totally get that you know it's my goal to kind of do the things the best way I see fit possible and you know if you have different motivations and different you know education and different training and, and your, your, your life leads you down a different path hey more power to you and more importantly, if what you are doing is working and you verify this through medical testing and all these things, great. You know, don't change. <laughs> but I'm just putting out there what I do in case you guys are interested and want to learn or want to even incorporate or try some of the things to maybe potentially even make your diet better. Now, the other thing that I will say is that, you know, one of my goals in life is to always grow and improve in whatever I'm doing and all, and always believe in the back of my head that you can do better. And you know, this is probably put in my head by my mom. Thanks mom on some levels, but also thanks mom on other levels. Because maybe that's also why I'm single, because I always like, I'm like, I could get a better girlfriend. But you know, on the other hand, you know, I think people can learn and grow together or apart, however that may happen. So, you know, as much as this have, may have helped me with raw foods, it probably hasn't helped me too much in relationships. Um, you know, although maybe I'm waiting for the better person and we'll be better together. <laughs> so, just throw that out there. Um, so, yeah, Oakley is, uh, is kind of like a needy today, but that's all right. Let's go along with the journey and uh, learn about the 12 things that make my raw food diet a little bit different. The first way that makes my raw food diet different than many, but not all, is that I grow a good percentage of the food I eat, uh, especially the vegetables. You know, there'll be days, and this is a rare day, where I actually grew everything that I eat. Most days I grow some of what I eat, and every day is a little bit different depending on the time of year and the season, but I can tell you basically when I'm not traveling, pretty much every day that I'm home, I eat something out of my garden. And this is super critical, super important. You know, food is not food is not food. Kale that you buy at the grocery store that's been picked, harvested, and shipped on a semi-truck, you know, using organic growing standards, you know, in my opinion, is not the best, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, you know, I really grow my own food for many reasons. Number one, I could pick it and eat it right then and there, causing less nutrient loss, right? I grow year-round in my climate, so I'm able to basically eat something out of my garden every single day. Right now, I'm piling in like insane amounts of greens, juicing greens, 
drying greens, fermenting greens, preserving greens so I can eat them later in the summer when I won't have these same exact greens to eat. And that's also super important to my diet as you guys will learn about in a minute. You know, in addition, when I grow the food myself, I can determine what exactly I put on the plants being in the fertilizer. So I put trace minerals that are not usually added in industrial agriculture. Maybe even local farmers and farmers markets near you are not adding these valuable trace minerals and nutrients in the soil. I also put copious amounts of, of biologics or microbes or microflora or microbiome into my soil. I brew my own compost teas with nutrients and really enhance the microbial action in microlife and fungi and bacteria in the soil. This is also something not commonly talked about in you know standard uh, gardening practices and not even talked about in industrial farming for that matter you know they might be using chicken manure you know or cow manure which is basically can be considered organic and then they use it to grow your crops but you know it, the the food quality that you're eating is only good as the soil so I really have a focus on improving the soil quality so that I could eat higher quality food in addition because I grow my own food you know, I'm not, I'm not just limited to going to Whole Foods or Whole Paycheck or the grocery store, the health food store, and buying only the produce items they have there. I could basically get seeds and collect seeds, which I have done from all over the world, and plant those in my garden and have foods that are not normally available to me. And this will play a big role in, you know, making and differentiating how I do my diet a little bit differently than other people out there. Not to say that it's right or wrong, but you know, I truly believe that growing your own food is one of the most important things everybody could do. Even if you don't eat a raw food diet, you know, we should all be growing our own food. It is more sustainable on the planet, and especially in these uncertain times, I have a certain supply of food that I know will be there as long as the sun comes out and I get water and everything grows. You know, I will have food to eat. So above all else, even if you're not gonna eat a raw food, plant-based diet grow your own food people and I teach you guys how to do that at growing your greens because it is something super near and dear to my heart and so important uh, to me and uh, you know as a creature living on the planet in Oakley <laughs> he also gets to eat at my garden he basically eats like last night he had my salad that I got to eat which was escarole he liked it <laughs> he gets to eat all the other things I get to eat he got jackfruit yesterday so he's he's a well taken care of dog and also, it could be high energy here. <laughs> Second way I eat differently than many raw foodists, but not all, because many raw foodists will do this also, but I drink a considerable amount of juice. Now, I do need to give a testimonial or a disclaimer, is that I do sell juicers for a living, and this is how I make my living. This I'm able to make my YouTube videos, how I am able to travel and all these things. But I'm not just saying juicing is good because I sell them. I mean, there's plenty of other people into raw foods for good periods of time that also believe in the power of juicing. You know, and even if I didn't eat raw foods, I would still be juicing <laughs> because I believe it to be a benefit, right? Um, juicing allows you to concentrate the nutrients in the fruits and vegetables, especially the leafy green vegetables and vegetables that are the most undereaten food on the planet. Um, including by some raw foodists, which is not so good in my opinion. Um, and then basically condense them down and then get them in a more concentrated form. You know, especially when foods that are being bought at the store in this day and age have less nutrition than foods of yesteryear, which has been proven by USDA and studies and all these things like, you know, an apple from the 1950s and an apple today. You'd have to eat several apples today to get the same nutrition as that apple from the 1950s for various reasons. You know, uh, juicing allows me to concentrate the nutri nutrition to get that into me. So, for example, I couldn't, well, I could eat one pound of carrots and I'd get the pound of nutrition out of that pound of carrots, but I could juice five pounds of carrots and then get the nutrition out of five pounds of carrots less some of the fiber, um, you know. And so I know some of you guys, you know, everything is a pro and a con in life, right? Juicing, it's no longer a whole food, John. How can you say you're a whole food, plant based? you know raw vegan well that's what I say uh, you know because juicing removes some but not all the fiber you know in carrots for example there's about 50 percent insoluble 50 percent insoluble fiber soluble and insoluble fiber and the juicing removes the insoluble fiber keeps the soluble fiber in the liquid so basically I'm removing some of the fiber yes fiber is important and there are plenty other times of the day that I eat carrots and eat other fruits and vegetables 
to get copious amounts of fiber in my diet. More than the standard American and even in carrot juice, I'm getting about half the fiber. But more importantly, besides the concentrating the nutrients and getting more of that beta carotene so I can have double the reference range on my beta carot my last beta carotene blood test that most Americans have so that I could make vitamin A so that my immune system could be strong, right? Uh, the juicing also makes it more assimilatable. So they say, oh, you got to cook your carrots. You get, you get more, you know, vitamin A out of if you cook them. Well, that's because cooking breaks open cell walls, but at the same time it's breaking open cell walls, making nutrition more available. It's also destroying, you know, the heat is destroying viable nutrients, you know, in the process of cooking. So that's why I like to break open cell walls with my juicers and basically get the nutrition that way. And not everybody into raw foods would agree with juicing. You know, I do recommend juicing leafy greens and vegetables primarily, not necessarily juicing fruits. Um, you know, I'd rather eat the fruits whole. That's a whole different discussion topic. But yeah, juicing is a big part of my life. Actually, before my first meal of fruit that I've eaten, eaten today, I will have drank basically eight pounds of vegetables. So I already had four pounds of vegetables and basically one pound of vegetables equals eight ounces or one cup of juice. So I basically have 32 ounce juice today already. I will drink one more 32 ounce uh, you know, juice, which is another four pounds of vegetables, before I start even eating my fruit, right? And you know, uh, maybe some people into raw foods may have a juice occasionally, maybe do a juice fast, but this is a, a regular everyday occurrence in my life that does take some time to make the juice. Um, and I do test out many juicers and make many videos on comparing and contrasting the juicers so you guys can get the best one for you. And I'll let you guys know that my favorite juicer at this time is the Omega VSJ843. I'll post a link down below to the video on that juicer and why I like it so much for my specific style and for what I'm juicing at this time. So if you guys want to see the juices that I'm drinking today, hey, check me out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash growing your greens. I posted the three juices that I'll be drinking today before I even eat my first meal of fruit. Third way my diet is different than many raw foodists is that I also eat powders. You know, besides juicing, which basically concentrates the nutrition without some of the fiber, right? The powders concentrate nutrition without the water and without some of the phytonutrients that are, that are missing uh, due to the processing process, right? Um, I really love my powders, whether they're vegetable powders, like wheatgrass powder, like chlorella powder, like spirulina powder, or my berry powders, like, uh, you know, um, black raspberry powder, blueberry, wild blueberry powder, strawberry powder, pomegranate powder, I'm spitting on my little man here, cranberry powder, you know, I have aronia berry powder, maki powder, acai powder, all these different crazy powders, and are they necessary? Well, especially if you're not, if you don't have like, you know, money to buy these things, you probably don't need to buy them, but you should eat some berries and try to expand your diet, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I like to include these things because I feel, and proven by some scientific studies that I have read, is that these valuable phytonutrients that are still left over even after processing can play significant benefits in our health and in our diets. And so that's why I really like to get those uh, like high anthocyanin rich foods like the wild blueberries that I love to eat. Also blackberries, really good, or even the black raspberries, super amazing. And basically, you know, once again, you know, if you take uh, food and say you could like take a pound of wild blueberries, you dry them. Like if they're freeze dried, you could freeze dry one pound of wild blueberries and it makes literally two and a half ounces or something, three ounces of basically dried food. So now when you eat the three ounces of dried food, it's like eating a whole pound or the nutrition, less of the water and some of the nutrients that are basically blown off in the drying process, depending on the drying method. Um, you know, you're going to get the nutrition out of that. So, you know, I regularly eat these powders, sometimes just to make things fun and tasty, and sometimes just to add some nutrients <laughs> into my things. Barley grass powder, wheatgrass powder, all these different powders I have. Like, I have a collection of powders, and I can make its own video on all the different powders I eat. And, you know, I don't have these things every day. I might have this one today, this one tomorrow, and I just rotate through them all, and I make sure I get them into me. So I have a wider variation in my diet than fresh fruit food could provide. The fourth way... I eat differently than some raw foodists out there is that I really focus on eating high antioxidant foods or nutrient dense foods however you want to term it you know nutrient density is basically 
um, when you're focusing on eating things that are more have more micronutrients than macronutrients. So macronutrients are things like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and micronutrients are those things not often talked about, like you know vitamins and minerals, trace minerals, polyphenols, antioxidants, even fiber and prebiotic and probiotics could be considered um, micronutrients as well. And you know there are some really popular you raw food YouTube fruit people on YouTube many years ago stressing on the macronutrients but guess what they forgot about the micronutrients right they said eat 30 bananas a day eat this eat this carb up man eat all these carbs you know and that in my opinion is not the answer yes absolutely we need some carbohydrates for our calories but you know the real power of the raw foods are in their micronutrients you see these elements that most Americans are not getting. Most Americans are eating plenty of macronutrients, but they're not focused on micronutrients, right? My diet is focused around micronutrients by growing themselves, by growing them in my garden, by concentrating them in juices and in powders, and eating higher nutrient dense foods whenever possible in my life. So if I go to the grocery store, right, I have this option of buying blueberries or bananas, right? Berries or bananas. What do I choose? right? I choose the berries because the berries are significantly more phytonutrient dense or nutrient dense, have a lot more of these antioxidants and vitamins than the bananas. That being said, you know, I actually ate bananas maybe about a week ago <laughs> because there are some nutrients in bananas you can't get from berries. So once again, you know, I like to incorporate a lot, but overall I'm going to, you know, choose more nutrient dense foods than not. So for example, you know, this may be as simple as changing the foods you eat when you go to buy them. So, for example, if you go to the store and you could you could buy white peaches or um, you know the standard yellow ones, which one is more nutrient dense, right? Well, by scientific journal published studies, the white ones actually have more antioxidant content than the yellow ones. Believe it or not, so that's amazing. So you know, so it's like these little small changes. Like when you go to the store, like I always try to buy purple carrots at the store instead of the orange ones because they're more nutrient dense right in my garden when I'm growing the sugar snap peas I don't just grow green sugar snap peas I grow the purple sugar snap peas and if it wasn't raining outside I'd take you guys out there to show you you know if you could check my Instagram I got pictures on it you know so by making these small changes you know I believe that kind of gives me the extra advantage extra edge because some of these phyto phytonutrients lycopenes anthocyanins polyphenols have been shown in scientific studies to be health promoting health beneficial and I'd rather get them in me than not. Fifth way my diet is different than many people who eat raw foods is I really, really, really try to eat a wide variety of foods as much as humanly possible and include categories of foods that may not be normally eaten on a raw foods style diet. So aside from, you know, eating fruits and vegetables, you know, I travel to like go to different places, I get food shipped into me, you know, I drive for hours at a time sometimes or like, you know, source and buy pawpaws. I think I drove two hours one day to just buy pawpaws. You know, I'll drive several hours to just stock up on, you know, a lot different food. I'll, when I go shopping, I'll shop at like five different places because each store will have a little bit different inventory. And I might be able to find this one thing, like I got jackfruit last week. You can see on my Instagram, 40 pounder, it is delicious. He even likes it. He likes the rag because the rag is like, yellow rag it's not like white rag and it's sweet it's delicious so he gets all the rag i get all the good stuff <laughs> he had it yesterday he loves it so much um but so i really go out of my way to like eat a wide variety plus besides just sourcing a wide variety when i buy it right i also grow a wide variety i don't just grow romaine lettuce you know i grow you know lola rosa lettuce i grow trout spreckled lettuce i grow nevada lettuce i grow tropical lettuce i grow all the different kinds of lettuces because each different lettuce has a little bit different you know spectrum of polyphenols vitamins and minerals that it's absorbing uh, you know from the garden in addition I also include things like seaweed which some people oh seaweed is toxic it's from the ocean you know well I, I don't need a seaweed based diet but I do have some seaweed because I believe especially on a raw vegan diet if you're not using you know iodized salt you need to get your iodine from somewhere and that's not an item that's usually supplemented in soils of today so I get my iodine from seaweed, like ground up seaweed powder. I get a few select sources from around and I always rotate them out. So if there is some heavy metals in there, right, 
I'm not like concentrating because I'm not getting only this source of seaweed. I'm getting it from different places and, and I try to get sources that are tested that I know are, you know, don't have the radiation from Fukushima and all these things. And then plus, of course, you know, our, our bodies can detox heavy metals in appropriate quantities, but not when they're concentrated. So I try not to concentrate these things by eating a seaweed-based diet. My, my diet is based around fruits and vegetables with some seaweed, you know, to get some select nutrients. In addition, you know, I include a wide variety of foods in my diet, which we'll talk about a bit later, like including some heat processed foods, which we'll talk about in, I think, number 12. Um, but more importantly, um, I also eat things like fermented foods, which some raw food camps may be like totally against fermented foods. They're like fermented foods, that's rotten food, you know, or seaweeds or filter feeders. You know, these do not make up the majority of my diet, but I like to have a little bit of fermented foods because I believe them to be beneficial, right? And so, yeah, my, I try to have as much wide of a variety as humanly possible. And, you know, and because I believe that every different food provides certain nutrients, and the more you focus on one food and basically get rid of entire categories of foods, you know, that may not be so good for us. So I'm like, you know, you need to find your own balance, and I have found mine. And I would hope you would also find yours in eating as much wide variety of foods as possible because every food can have a potential benefit, but they could also have a detriment as well. Sixth way I eat a diet a little bit different than many people on a raw foods diet is that I truly believe to the, to the you know, bottom of my heart that quality matters. Oh my God, kale is not kale is not kale. If you guys want to see and learn about this, Check the link down below, I'll post in the video to our video I did with a friend, Wendy of Wendy Land, popular YouTube channel, where I had her over taste testing the kales, like at least a half dozen different kales and six different other kind of leafy greens I grow in my garden, and she could tell you in her own words what my kale tasted like. I know a lot of you guys might hate kale because it tastes so nasty, so bitter, and honestly, if I had to eat the kale out the store too, I'd be probably right in your same boat. <laughs> But to me, kale is a totally different creature because I grow it myself, I add the right trace minerals in, I grow it during the right time of year, I harvest it fresh at its peak, and it is so delicious if I harvest it at its peak. Once it starts to get old, it starts to get bitter and tough and just nasty, and you're going to throw out the stems, which are actually rich in minerals, so I like to eat my stems, or even I had a video on juicing my kale stems for the trace minerals. Um, you know, super important quality of the food you're eating is super critical, super important. That's why I grow my own food. So I can have the highest quality grown by my own two hands. You know, I, I grow a good portion and I eat out of my garden every day, as I said. You know, um, but one day I will have like, you know, grow 99 or 95 percent of the food I eat will be grown on my own land. I'm still not quite there yet, but I, it is one of my goals and it will happen, you know, once I find somebody to settle down with and have a family and we're going to have a farm together it is what I'd like to do, uh, you know. So uh, yeah, the quality is, is critical. And you know, if you go to the grocery store and just keep buying the kale, oh, I get organic kale at the grocery store. You know, well, hey, that's good. Maybe the kale from the farmer's market might be better because it's fresh harvested, fresh picks, not traveling as far. But the kale that you're growing at your house is, is the best, right? It, it provided you put the right soil nutrients into the garden. You know, I go out of my way to visit farms and farmer's markets and different markets to you know source the highest quality food I even gotten kicked out <laughs> of fruit festivals because I bring my bricks tester I don't know many other people in raw foods that come with a bricks tester <laughs> and I bricks test my food because that's at least a uh, minimum quality a way you could determine quality if you do not have finely attuned taste buds to sense the nutrients in the food later this year or maybe even next year they're going to have a bio-nutrient meter, which I'm really looking forward to. That's going to be a game changer. You can literally, you know, uh, put some of the food on this little meter, and it'll tell you the antioxidant content. So I'm really looking forward to that because I like to geek out on this stuff. And, you know, most people think, oh, I just need to buy some kale. Just go to the store. And, you know, even the store you shop at could be, could be different. If you just go to a big box, you know, grocery store that sells some organic stuff, and they have kale that's a little bit yellowing, but it's, a dollar less than the health food store, but the kale is like looking super green and vibrant. Hey, spend a little bit more, you know, go to the health food store that has better looking kale because that's gonna be, have probably more nutrition in it, right? You can bricks test it to find out, or even better yet, go to the, go to the farmer's market where it's gonna be fresher and or even better yet than that, grow your own.
Seventh way I eat differently than many, but not all raw foodists out there, is that I prepare 99% of the food that I eat with my own two hands, where I don't have a partner at present time that actually will make me food or come up with things. I'll prepare it with my own two hands, uh, you know, at home, using the highest quality ingredients, and based on what I feel like eating, what I have ripe in my garden, you know, my intuition on what I'm needing that day, and more importantly, also using the best processing and recipe creation techniques, right? I know a lot of you guys still might own a Vitamix, and hey, I used a Vitamix for many years, but Vitamix, I basically kicked it to the curb because the Vitamix is not a vacuum blender. The Vitamix oxidizes a lot of the food, and I have videos on vacuum blending versus non-vacuum blending, and so I learn about all the appliances that allow you to best process your food to retain the most nutrition in it, and I mean, I bet the best appliances for processing food, we are given free and clear by nature, by God, whomever you believe in, it's our teeth. Our teeth are the best food processors in the world, not a juicer, not a machine. And we should be actually using our teeth significantly, like my salad last night was escarole. That was a little bit more mature than, uh, than I would like, or radicchio. And, you know, I had to chew it a lot, man. I was getting tired from chewing my dinner. Usually that didn't happen, and usually it takes me about an hour to eat my dinner because I'm just chewing every mouthful literally into a mush like we should. And most people just take two chews and they swallow, right? So yeah, I try to like use slow juicers that'll maximize the nutrition. You know, that when I'm juicing, I'm not using a high speed juicer. You know, I cut things with ceramic knives, which that, you know, that's debatable if it's necessarily better, you know. You know, very important also if you're eating things like, you know, uh, allium family plants, which I do eat, also brassica family plants, which I also do eat, which some people in raw foods may not eat. Um, you know, I, back, I, I, use, I eat them only raw and then I pre-cut them and let them kind of like, uh, you know, have some en enzymatic reactions on the food before I eat them to have higher, basically, nutrition created, you know, by the food. And I think that's one of the main benefits of eating uh, raw foods uh, because I'm not cooking it. Now, the other thing I don't do when creating my own food at home is I don't have these recipes. I mean, I have a recipe book, and you can check that out at gygbook.com. And all those recipes I basically just made out of thin air based on maybe things I've eaten in the past. But... Every day I eat, I never make the same exact thing twice because I never measure anything. Like measuring is for people that want to waste time and create extra dishes to wash. You know, I just pour a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I've been doing this for so long, 25 years, that I kind of know what I'm doing now. And, you know, I, I custom tailor everything I eat. And because everything I eat is custom tailored, I'm not like, oh, making my standard spaghetti recipe on Friday night or making my ginger, you know, green juice blast you know, every morning, you know, I'm always getting different recipes and I'm using different ingredients based on what's available in my garden, based on what I'm able to buy locally that's organic, what I'm able to source. Like yesterday, I bought like 32 or 30 something cucumbers, organic cucumbers, that I'll be eating and juicing over the next week or two. You know, a couple weeks ago, I got all this romaine, the romaine hearts that I was juicing, you know, as well as the stuff out of my garden. You know, so I'm eating the foods you know, that I get able to source and creating meals out of that. So this also encourages me to rotate my diet and not ever eat. Like when I go to the grocery store or, you know, I don't always have to go with a shopping list with like, I have to get romaine, I have to get zucchini, I have to get this. Like every time I go, I don't know what I'm going to get. I get based on price, what's looking good, what's looking fresh, what's the highest quality. And then I prepare my meals around that. So I'm not like, you know, eating the same food Every day, and I know a lot of you guys will get in the rut, you know, oh, every day you'll have this exact breakfast, this exact lunch, and this exact dinner. Every day for me is totally different. I have three different meals, three different juices, basically every single day, unless I pre-made juices for the next three days, and those juices for those three days are the same. But the next time I do a juice session, right, I make different things based on the produce availability, based on what I got, and based on what I feel like I'm needing in my body at that time. And, you know, so that's very important. You know, I want you guys to really switch it up and not make the same exact recipes, you know, because, you know, we're creatures of habit. And, you know, I think for, for optimal health, we need to get out of being creatures of habit and kind of like be creatures more of intuition on some level. Not to say we should be all intuition and no habit, but I think there's a nice balance of both. And I think many people might try to just keep following these recipes. And I think also important to this uh, whole factor I may not discuss is that we also need to be self thinkers and not followers. I think that's another thing. I mean, if you've been doing a raw foods diet for a long time, you know, you will become a self thinker. You can't just be a follower and, and be successful on this diet in the long run, in my opinion, because at some point you will fail because if you're using somebody else's program, maybe that works great for that person, 
but maybe not for you. So you need to find the nuances, you know, that you need to do uh, in your diet to make things a little bit separate, a little bit different than other people, so that it, you can do it successfully as well. Eighth way I eat differently than many raw foodists is because I like to say I eat intu intuitively scientific. What does that mean? Is that like against each other? Because if it's if you're going and living your whole life by intuition, like I met a person that really lives their life by intuition and hey more power to you, you want to just live 100% intuitively and you know if I trusted my intuition I knew it was 100% right all the time hey that'd be great to live always by your intuition but um, as much as I'm into intuition and listening to your body which is very important I'm also into listening to science because maybe our bodies or whoever tells us whatever we think or hear may not be right you know so I like to be scientifically you know, um, intuitive and, you know, check with, check in with science. You know, I research constantly on a daily basis, you know, um, and read different things about plants and nutrients and nutrients in food so that I could become a better person and maybe get more of these phytonutrients that have been proven to be health building into me. In addition, I listen to my body and seeing what it needs. And in addition, I also get regular blood tests, which is more sciencey. Uh, you know, to see that if what I'm doing both through science and through intuition is working and if not, I see and I make adjustments accordingly so that my next blood test could be dialed in and in line. And I think, you know, some people could get too far into science and follow everything that science says, <clears throat> Dr. Gregor, <clears throat> or <laughs> be too much in their intuition like some maybe airy fairy raw foodist and then they get into trouble as well. So I want you guys to have like, you know, a nice a balance of both and, you know, use your brain, use your intuition, use what you feel, but also, you know, let's not, you know, let, let's use science to our benefit in this day and age because we actually have it in, you know, to say a hundred years ago, we didn't have all, all the science, we didn't have all the know-how that you had that we have now, you know, so I think some of these raw food, you know, paradigms were created when we didn't have all this science and now, you know, I like to basically, sh um, you know, bring together uh, the science of today and some of the raw food beliefs and techniques from yesteryear into one to have even a, a better mousetrap, in my opinion. Ninth way my diet may be different than other people who eat a raw foods diet is that I'm constantly adjusting and reassessing and learning new things and open to change versus being dogmatic. Some raw food camps out there, even still to this day, are pretty dogmatic that this is the way you gotta do it, and if you don't do it this way, then you're wrong, and that's why it didn't work for you. <laughs> you know, and there's many things in life that are dogmatic, and I don't wanna even go into some of them. You know, politics, you know, being vegan, even being raw vegan can be quite dogmatic, and I want you to just blow open the dogmatism. You know, and I want you guys to start thinking for yourself and analyzing because I think if you guys do and try to think outside the box, you know, a whole new world will open up for you. And that's how I, I've tried to live my life to always, you know, um, come up with new methods and new ways of doing things that may or may not, you know, be better. I, I try to educate myself often. I travel. I mean, right now I'm not traveling because of COVID. I've had, had canceled three or four trips and maybe even my fifth trip that was supposed to be planned for later this month. Because of this, because when I travel, you know, I learn, you know, I go to organic farming conferences where I learn the best growing practices. I go to the natural health, you know, natural products expo trade shows, which was just canceled in March because of the COVID, where, you know, where I get to meet doctors, see new products, see new different foods that have different nutrients in them so that I could better my diet and also share this and bring this to you. I make videos at all these conferences with the latest and greatest products that may, you know, help you become better in your life and I don't know anybody else that's doing all the things that I do because if there was I would like to follow them <laughs> so that maybe I could work a little bit less um, you know so I really want you guys to you know not be so dogmatic and always be open to the possibility but you know that being said you know there's a lots of scams out there so always be aware they might be getting fleeced at the same time and look up you know, for, uh, you know, the documented scientific journal published research, which I also do look at regularly uh, to keep up to date as well. And also experiment on yourself and see how the product or whatever you're doing makes you feel. And if somebody says, you must do it this way, <laughs> then you might want to be cautious about it. some of the things they say. Tenth way, my raw food diet is a little bit different, or maybe different, than other people eating raw 
is that I have a fruit and vegetable based do dominant diet, right? <laughs> You know, there's mainly a couple different camps in raw foods. You could have like a fruitarian camp where people, fruit's the best, man. You got to get your calories from fruit and you can't get your calories from vegetables or fat or anywhere else. And there's people that are into eating more green foods. That fruit, man, that stuff causes cancer, it promotes cancer growth. You shouldn't eat fruit. So you got to eat greens and you got to eat fat and all this stuff. And where am I? I mean, I'm in a different camp. I'm my own camp. I'm playing my own game, guys. So yeah, fruit is absolutely important. I love eating fruit. Fruit is so delicious. I'll never deter anybody from eating fruit. Fruit is healthier than any other food on the entire planet for the most part, except some of these nutrient-dense vegetables. But vegetables are also super important, super critical, and I'm such a vegetable die-harder, right? Vegetables are super critical. You know, that's why my YouTube channel is called Growing Your Greens, because I've learned the value of the greens and the vegetables, you know? And I'm never going to say, is fruit more important than vegetables? Well, you know what? That depends on you, where you're at in your life cycle, the kind of energy you need, and what you need to do in life. But for me, at this point in my life, the vegetables, you know, maybe a little bit above the fruit, right? Maybe when I was younger, fruit was more important, but now the vegetables are super more critical to me. And I tend to get a lot of calories from my vegetables. And I know some people, John, you can't get calories from vegetables. They only have like 80 to 100 calories per pound, depends on the vegetable, um, you know? But it is actually quite possible to do that. Fruit has 300 calories a pound, so literally you have to eat three times more vegetables than fruit to get about the same amount of calories. And this varies a little bit. This is just round numbers, of course. You know, and it's easy when you juice. Oh my God, that's why I juice. I've had. I'm gonna have eight pounds of vegetables basically before I even eat my fruit meal, and that's a lots of calories. You know, it'd be like it's eight pounds of vegetables. That could be like 800. You know, and I have a little bit of apple in there, but usually it's mostly vegetables, you know. And a root vegetable is in there. 800 calories, 706 to 800 calories, depending on the juice I'm making, you know, of calories from juice. And then I get a couple hundred calories from, you know, fruit in the day, or maybe even more than that, because I'm probably going to eat like two pounds of jackfruit or a couple pounds of berries. And then I'll have a nice salad meal at night, right? So, you know, I really want to encourage you guys to ramp up your vegetable consumption you know, and have varied diet of vegetables. Don't just eat kale every day because you need more vegetables, right? Kale every day could be problematic because of the, some of the heavy metals like thallium, kale can't absorb from the ground. You know, things like spinach, if you eat spinach every day, it might be bad because of the oxalates, although our bodies can handle some levels of oxalates, although some people are predisposed to not handling oxalates well. We should have beneficial microbes that break those down as well as other things, and that's a whole different topic. Um, you know, so we can handle these things. So I eat a wide variety of uh, different nutrients. It's uh, super critical and, you know, have a fruit and vegetable dominated diet with about a handful of, of nuts or seeds a day to give me some of the different trace minerals and I rotate the nuts as well and the seeds, uh, you know, so I can have a balanced diet. And, you know, so that's how I eat. And, you know, I, I haven't heard of many other people that really, you know, try to ramp up the vegetables. Everybody talks about, yeah, you get to eat, you know, a lot of fruit and then maybe a few vegetables. I really try to ramp up the vegetables and I would encourage you guys to do it also. So the reason why I love the vegetables so much and fruits is because they're kind of good for certain reasons on, on in different levels, right? I mean, and this is a generality, of course. Fruits in general have higher calories, right? And calories are good. We need calories to survive. If you don't have enough calories, you know, you'll, you're going to get caloric deficient, which actually is a form of malnutrition. And so that's not good. And, but then the fruits don't tend, in general, and in general, are there exceptions, to have as many phytonutrients or micronutrients, such as the vitamins and the minerals, especially the minerals, trace minerals, you know, and especially the depth and breadth, meaning a wide range, of phytonutrients as the vegetables. Whereas the vegetables, they don't have a lot of calories, so they may not be able to assist you unless you're drinking lots of vegetable juice, like a lot. Um, but they have lots of different phytonutrients and unique phytonutrients, right? If you're not eating like brassica family plants, some pe some people in raw foods just don't eat brassica family plants. They think they're toxic and they're bitter and they're nasty. And yeah, if you buy them from the store, they can be. But oh my God, I want I want to, somebody who says that. I want them to come over my garden in, in the winter time when I'm growing my white Siberian kale, and then I'll have them eat it, and they can tell me how nasty it is and how fire it is. Dude, it is so tender, so delicious. It's amazing. But anyways, yeah. So anyways, the the vegetables are way more abundant in these trace minerals that are critically important if you want to become mineral deficient and have your teeth mineralized and all these things, in my personal opinion. 
um, and also some of the unique nutrients like the like the isothiocyanates in the brassica family plants or and some people don't even eat onions or garlic which I also consider vegetables and be quite health promoting vegetables that I don't like to eat, make meals out of by any means but I do like to include on a regular basis for some of their you know proven scientific published uh, you know uh, benefits in uh, small, smaller quantities. So in the end I would encourage you guys to basically eat a more balanced fruit and vegetable approach right you know if you eat lots of fruit now then hey great you know try to improve increase some of the vegetables that you would eat. Juicing is an excellent way to do that. And if you're on the side of, man, I don't eat fruit, John. I eat lots of vegetables, but not a lot of fruit. Hey, there's some good stuff in fruit too. And especially those things like berries and high nutrient dense fruits. Try eat some more fruit. You know, I think we need to really eat a balanced food. It's everybody always wants to do this or that, but how about do everything? 11th way my raw vegan diet may be different than others is that I strive to supplement appropriately. So yes, I do take supplements. You know, I take green powders and fruit powders which some people may think that's a processed food John I'm not eating it's not raw it might have been the heat process too hot well you know um, you know it's each their own is what I would say but you know I find them to be beneficial and especially some certain supplements I find to be critical and quite beneficial like if you don't have proper B12 you're not going to be methylating properly and that could actually really lead to some bad health consequences if you don't have proper B12 levels in the winter time when the sun is not out and if I'm not traveling then I will take some vitamin D in addition although I do add zinc into my garden beds you know I may take some zinc on occasion when I feel my body needs it you know I also take other different herbs that I think may be beneficial you know for me as well as an EPA and DHA you know a supplement that has small amounts of DHA and EPA just in case my body is not making it from the greens because I also feel they're quite essential. I take some probiotics as well uh, to ensure that I have good probiotics and especially you know as needed when I'm traveling and I get a stomach ache. I take probiotics and basically the stomach ache is gone because it's usually like a price, some kind of foodborne illness. The probiotics kick butt over in my personal opinion and I also take some enzymes you know and so I'm not really going to get into my supplement regimen, regimen because it, it works for me and I'm not going to say that you guys should take it. I will say that I believe every person on the planet uh, should take a B12 supplement. That's really easy. And if you don't want to take one, then at least minimally get your B12 checked to see if you really need it or not. And more importantly than a standard B12 blood test, you should get your homocysteine and or methylmalonic acid levels checked because they're actually the functional indicators. And I know some people in raw foods, the raw food diet is so perfect, we don't need to supplement anything. Well. I don't know about the last time you checked, but man, the food that you're eating is not the food that would have ate like, you know, 500 years ago in nature that would, probably would have had B12. And so for that reason, because things have changed so much and nutrients in food have degraded so much, that's why I like to supplement certain things that I may not be getting from my diet. You know, my diet is not a supplement based diet. I always strive to get all the nutrition I need from food. And maybe in this upcoming year, I will be able to get my B12 from food. Uh, the lentin or water lentil uh, powder is a product I just started getting and they are claiming it has active B12 in it, not an analog. You know, I know they've said things like seaweed has B12, but those have been shown to be analogs, but they're saying lentin, which is a water lentil, which is basically just, you know, grown in water, I think in the farm in Florida, in, in the United States, which is actually called duckweed, and so I might start to grow duckweed myself. Uh, absorbs B12 into its cellular structure and when we eat it we get it too but you know I'm not at the point where I'm gonna be recommending that I'm at the point where I'm trying that to see if it makes a difference you know for me and my blood tests you know before I say anything further so my goal with the supplements is basically to supplement my diet if needed but my first goal is to find the plants find the you know different plant foods or fruits and vegetables that contain the nutrients that I need to get you know for example for vitamin D if you can't get out to the Sun you could grow your own mushrooms, which I did do earlier this year, or you could buy mushrooms that are still alive. You could put them out in the sun, and they actually will create more vitamin D you know, within them before you eat them. And provided we convert that vitamin D into the proper form, you could have vitamin D. The other thing I would do before supplementing vitamin D is I'd get a light box, so proper lights, you know, certain tanning beds, but not all may help you create more vitamin D the natural way through our skin, through our, through our sun. Um, you know, so my goal is always to try to find the nutrients from the food first 
before just defaulting to the supplement because I really I have been actually in, in a lot of my raw food career uh, supplement in compliant which has not been a good thing so nowadays I'm, I'm more on track with uh, you know taking the recommended supplements that uh, I feel I need to be as healthy as possible and I would recommend that uh, for you as well and a uh, test to make sure uh, that you are not deficient. If I remember, I'll put a link down below for a video I did getting my blood test uh, from my friend Dr. Rick, uh, who can also help you uh, order and um, basically um, go over your blood test with you to make sure you're dialed in as well. The 12th and final way my diet may be different than other people that eat a raw vegan diet is that I eat heat processed foods. I don't like to say cooked foods. I like to say heat processed foods because the heat processed foods I eat, you know, I try to heat process it process them at the minimal temperature required if they are not already heat processed when I buy them, you know, which is a whole different topic. You know, so I'm not adverse to eating things that are heat processed, but that being said, my diet is not a heat processed or cooked food diet. It's a raw vegan diet. So I eat mostly predominantly fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and a small percentage, maybe 1%, maybe even less, because calorically some of the foods I eat that are heat processed have very low calories but they're super rich in antioxidants, phytochemicals, and unique properties that may not be available in food that I would you know, eat raw. So for example, some of the heat processed foods, and I won't get into them all here, are mushrooms. You know, mushrooms are quite beneficial. You know, they have uh, anti-angiogenesis uh, factors and other different nutrients and vitamins and um, things in there that are very critical for our health, in my opinion. They can support your immune system and all these things. You know, they should be heat processed. So actually I use a pressure cooker to pressure cook for 15 minutes. And then I, uh, you know, usually cool them down before eating them. I don't just eat them hot. I may dehydrate them and then turn them into a powder. I turn them into like little patties or little like um, wraps. You know, that was kind of fun. You know, so I'll do different things with them. But I don't eat them hot because I'm not used to eating hot foods. And I don't actually like eating hot foods. I like eating room temperature foods. I don't even like eating cold foods. And that's a whole different discussion topic. And, you know, another thing I eat that's heat processed is uh, my natto, so, uh, and uh, raw tempeh when I, when I can get it, and those foods are basically beans, they take the beans and they cook them, usually boiled beans, and then they basically inoculate them with the bacteria, um, and then they culture that, and now you, have, so now you have a living foods product versus a cooked product that's just cooked and then you're eating or a raw product that has not been heat processed or is minimally processed. Although you could buy almonds at the health food store and they're labeled raw, but they've been steam pasteurized these days if they're from California or you know, more you know, gross is the chemical pasteurization that they're using on those um, to kill the microbes. Uh, but basically the, the natto that I eat has been heat processed to cook the soybeans to basically break down and make the nutrition in them and take away some of the bad things uh, anti-nutrients in there, but then also inoculate it with microbes that then break it down further so it makes it more bioavailable and digestible for us, gives us the beneficial microbes. In addition, it gives us the metabolites that the bacteria had made. So in, in for natto actually, it makes a vitamin K2 that is very important for bone health that our bodies can make. Vitamin K2, from what I hear and from what I'm aware of, if we have a lot of K1, so that means eat your greens if you don't want to eat your natto and maybe your body will make enough and you know, the science is not clear to me personally from what I've seen on that. So that's why I take a K2. That's why a lot of people say you need to eat meat because meat has K2. Well, natto has even more K2 than meat. So there. And so just, I, and I like natto actually. In addition, eating beans and not excluding beans from my diet, in my opinion, is a beneficial thing because beans are also been shown to be quite health beneficial and health promoting as well for their own reasons. And so soon I will actually be uh, cooking my own beans in my pressure cooker and then fermenting them like I would make a sauerkraut. Um, and then I'll be trying that on a limited basis. Chef Ito at All Lock in Los Angeles has already been doing this. And so that's a live food product. So it allows you to basically enhance and increase the amount of beans in a, in a healthy beneficial way that may be even more beneficial than eating cooked beans because it's breaking down more of the nutrients, making them more bioavailable but also more importantly, allowing you to increase the biodiversity of the foods you're eating because you know the microbiome is huge. I really didn't cover that in this episode, but basically everything I eat is focused on creating a healthy microbiome in me and in my opinion, you know, cooked and fermented, you know, beans can help increase my microbiome and maybe even healthier 
than if I did not include them and basically just stop eating them as a whole category, which I had done for the majority of my raw foods career. You know, looking back on that, I would have done a little bit differently. You know, looking back on what I where I have come from, you know, I was fairly dogmatic in the olden days, and you know, um, and, and I've I've changed a lot over the last 25 years that I've been doing this lifestyle, learning and growing as a person, learning and growing and looking at science and my blood test and adjusting and modifying and learning from others that have been on this path or similar paths before me and taking into consideration what they're saying, what they're doing and how can I incorporate that into what I'm doing and do I need to maintain this 100% raw dogma which I think is quite a dogma um, you know or, or do, I, do I need to eat a healthy a healthier version of the diet still maintaining my raw food beliefs that I still hold near and dear to my heart but incorporating small very small amounts of these other foods that may also give me a significant benefit as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's my story today. You know, I hope you guys really enjoy this episode. I, I was actually making a big, huge salad today, harvesting all these greens from my garden to, to dry, uh, to concentrate the nutrition out of so I could eat later in the year when I'm traveling or when I get lazy or if, they're, if, if, if the grocery stores do shut down, I'm going to have a good supply of, of food here to eat. Um, and I want to make this video because, you know, Everybody who is on a raw foods path is doing it a little bit differently. And just because, you know, 10 raw food YouTubers failed at it, you know, and if you look at some of the raw food people that have failed in recent years that have made videos about this, all of them pretty much followed a specific style of raw foods diet, in my personal opinion, right? Uh, they surely didn't follow my videos and how I'm doing it because then, the, in my personal opinion, they wouldn't have fell off the wagon. They would be successful at doing it today. They wouldn't have all the challenges they're doing it today. So, you know, one of the things my friend Josh from the Boogie Brew Company says is success leaves clues, guys. You know, I want you guys to dial in your diet, you know, be a living and learning and breathing creature of the most powerful supercomputers on the planet, you know, not on your iPhone 11 Plus or whatever you guys got. Uh, you know, or your newest computer, but in our brains, and we need to exercise them and use them, and I think in this day and age, especially in these times, we're getting dumbed down, we're basically just being followers, and being basically put in line to follow the leader, be the sheeple, and I want you guys to be the self-thinkers, the self-innovators, people that come up with your own reasons and ideas, and experiment on yourself, and try these things, get blood tests, and do things smart, and incorporate as many of the tips that I've given you today that make sense to you, and if it doesn't make sense, hey, Tell me that I'm crazy. I don't really care. I'm on my path, man. And here's the more, most important thing of this episode for me is that if you guys have other things you guys think I should be looking into, things that I could be healthier, things that I can improve, right? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be trying to read the comments as much as I can, you know, because, you know, I'm always open to suggestions and learning and improving. If I'm not doing it as good as possible, I want to learn better. I want to learn about new, better appliances that allow me to preserve my food. The next level of appliances that I want to get into is refractance window drying that actually happens at a lot faster and preserves even more phytonutrients and other methods of drying and hopefully you know one of the companies I'm talking to is hopefully making a home unit because they only have commercial units you know because that's what I'm all about I'm about like getting as much of these valuable plant nutrition foods into us of course the phytonutrients vitamins trace minerals micronutrients these are all critical components and all the different ones that are discovered and undiscovered in foods that are even uncommon to the world, like my ashitaba that I had ashitaba juice from. You know, I just wish that for you. I'm, I was given a second chance at life because I almost lost my life when I was younger. I was given a second chance at life and I'm here to, to make a difference in the planet and hopefully I'm doing that. Hopefully this video has at least helped you a little bit. If it has, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, please be sure to share this with other people that are into raw foods, that want to eat healthy, that want to eat more nutrient dense, that want to better their diet because they could learn from me and not have to go through those school of hard knocks like I did over the last 25 years I've been doing this. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new and upcoming episodes that are coming out about every five to seven days and you don't know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel so you can enhance and better your health. Um, make sure to click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are Wealth of Knowledge. I had an amazing episode with Dr. Rick Dina about DHA and EPA on a raw vegan diet and how you may not need to supplement if you're doing it appropriately and you don't have some genetic predispositions and these other reasons. I'll put a link down below if I remember for that. Um, also, be sure before I go, sign up for the Raw Mastery course. If you guys got through this video, it shows me that you are serious about your health. You've got to sign up for the Raw Mastery 
um, register today. Hopefully you're seeing this the day the video comes out, which is Sunday. Uh, the first episode comes out tomorrow, which is actually me, and you're going to miss my episode or my interview uh, if you don't sign up as quickly as possible because I think they um, you know, take them down after a certain period of time. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keeping your fresh fruits and vegetables, they're always the best.